Yeah, there's really only two differences uh, between accounting for a sole proprietorship and a corporation. One is that a corporation is going to have a line on their income statement called income taxes because they're a separate entity and they pay their own income taxes. And the other is the stockholders equity section, which is really simple, except for the ridiculous outdated notion of par value. So let's take a look at the stockholders equity section of a corporation. Okay, we've looked at the balance sheet for a sole proprietorship many times. On the left hand side are our assets, things that we own like cash, accounts receivable, land, building and equipment. On the right hand side are two kinds of accounts, liabilities, those are things that we owe. What we own minus what we owe gives us the other type of account on the right hand side of the balance sheet, owner's capital. This is an owner's equity account and so far this is the only owner's equity account we've ever talked about. And what we're going to do with a corporation is we're going to expand that to make it a little bit more apparent exactly what our sources of capital are. And what do I mean by that? Remember when we first open our sole proprietorship, there is no money in there. So the owner makes an initial investment. Then after that, owner's capital at the beginning, plus that income minus owner's drawings gives us owner's capital at the end. With a corporation, we're still going to have our assets on the left hand side, we're still going to have our liabilities on the right hand side, and we're still going to have our owner's equity accounts on the right hand side. We're going to call them shareholders equity because the people that own the corporation are the shareholders. And instead of just having one category, we're going to break it down by subcategories. We're going to stick the par value of stock, don't worry that you don't understand that right now, into one account. The paid in capital in excess of par, or sometimes this is called additional paid in capital, often abbreviated APIC, that's going to be another category. Retained earnings is going to be a third category. Retained earnings at the beginning plus net income minus dividends gives us retained earnings at the end. That should sound familiar to you. Retained earnings at the beginning plus net income minus dividends gives us retained earnings at the end. And then treasury stock is when we buy back our shares from somebody else. So maybe we think our stock is trading at too low a price. Maybe we need to buy back shares to give to our officers for stock option programs. This account is going to have a debit balance. All these other accounts should have credit balances. Now it might get a little bit more complicated. We might sell preferred stock. In accounting class, we talk about preferred stock all the time, but it really isn't that common out there. Preferred stock looks like a bond. It has an interest rate attached to it. And the par value actually means something when we talk about preferred stock. With common stock, it really is a meaningless number. All right, so let's talk about the journal entries for a corporation compared to the journal entries for a sole proprietorship. So remember in a sole proprietorship, we did, we've done this journal entry a bazillion times. The owner invests a million dollars cash, debit cash, credit owner's capital, and then a little memo down here. Well, there's a, almost exactly the same entry when we sell stock to our stockholders. First, let's pretend we're in a state that doesn't require a par value for stock. We'll talk about par value in a second. So we sell 100,000 shares of stock for $10 a share. 100,000 shares times $10 a share, a share is a million dollars. So we debit cash for a million dollars, but instead of crediting owner's capital, we credit common stock for a million dollars. So you should see a similarity between these two journal entries. Now many states require companies to establish a par value. It's an absolutely meaningless number. Uh, there are various stories about why it came about. Is it to protect uh, other creditors so that we can't declare a great big dividend and then go out of business? Is it to protect uh, future purchasers of stock so that we can't sell a share of stock for $10 to a guy at 1 o'clock and then at 101 across town sell another share for nine dollars and screw that guy out of a dollar doesn't matter point is that the only thing that uh, par value does nowadays is a confuse beginning accounting students and if we're in a state that requires a par value our company will set it at as low a number as possible so they have maximum flexibility about declaring dividends and then they'll sell the stock for whatever it's worth and that whatever it's worth is unrelated to the par value so let's say this company set its stock par value at $1 and it sells those same 100,000 shares. So it still gets the million dollars, but because we're in a state that requires a par value, 
we have to break that credit into two parts. The par value goes into the account called common stock and anything in addition, anything in excess of that par goes into the account called paid in capital in excess of par or sometimes called additional paid in capital. And the total of that par value and that paid in capital in excess of par is called paid in capital. In other words, what our shareholders paid in. Just like our owner over here paid in a million dollars, our shareholders paid in a million dollars when they bought stock. The retained earnings is going to reflect money that we've earned on their behalf, but have not paid out in dividends. Retained earnings is not cash. It's a running total of our net income minus dividends. Because remember, retained earnings at the beginning plus net income minus dividends gives us retained earnings at the end. And so the only thing that might make this a little bit more complicated is if we sell some preferred stock and we'll talk about that later. So the two differences between a uh, sole proprietorship and a corporation are a corporation pays taxes on its income statement and on the balance sheet, uh, owner's capital account is all we have in the owner's equity section for sole proprietorship, whereas we have some subcategories over here on a corporation so people can see how much money got paid in by the shareholders and how much got earned by the corporation. Hope that helps.